and welcome again to my channel. I am your baby's doctor and it is so nice to have you here again today. Today we'll be talking about something that is bothersome to both parents and children and we'll be talking about any resins, which is also known as bedwetting. Thank you for joining us again. I'll be with you shortly. <music> how distressing this can be to any parent or child. I remember growing up, we had a neighbor that uh, was way older than us. I think he was about five years older than we were then. And he would regularly pee at night. So he would bed wet. And of course, like most of uh, us that grew up in Africa, your parents will humiliate you. <laughs> so they will bring out your mattress, they put it outside so that everyone that passes by would know that you peed during the night. So they will put your mattress outside and of course some people will come and say, oh, what happened? Who peed again? And of course we'll sing songs for such children and humiliate them. Back then, parents might not have perceived it like they are humiliating their child. But studies have shown that such acts by parents has uh, caused a lot of problems with children with their psychosocial and mental well-being. So this is why I'm talking today about anuresis, the things to do and the things not to do when a child is bedwetting. So anuresis, like I said, it's uh, bedwetting, which is usually nocturnal, that is, it happens at night. And it is basically defined as when a child is not dry at night. This is more common in males than females now this is not a sexist channel i'm just stating facts and truth here so it's not like it's not like i'm trying to figure the females more than the males but it is known that anuresis is actually more common in boys than in girls and most children by the age of four would have attained night dryness so they say about 90 percent of children by the age of four would have attained day and night um, dryness and today we'll be talking about those exceptional cases that uh, fail to attain night dryness by the age of four now this is this could be a problem a major problem and at the same time might be a minor problem that can be managed by um, some things that parents can do at home now for anuresis it can be divided into two types it can be primary anuresis or secondary anuresis so basically primary anuresis is when a child has never attained night dryness so the child has always been peeing and has at no point has attained night dryness. While secondary anuresis is when a child has stopped, has been dry at night for a very long time and then suddenly starts uh, peeing or bedwetting again. So these have many causes. There are a lot of things that can cause anuresis in children and I will just talk briefly about some of them. Some of the causes of anuresis. The one that I would like to put in parents' faces <laughs> is genetics. I don't know why parents would never or will almost never own up to the fact that they also bed, uh, went to the bed for some years before they stopped. This is something that has been going on from generation to generation because they said that um, sometimes when it's genetically inherited, it does not skip generation so it's in the autosomal dominant form which does not skip generation so which means that if the father or the mother was the one that was uh, always bedwetting oh one of the children who can have such um, an inheritance so please if your child is bedwetting i think you should also look back or ask your parents uh, if you also had similar symptoms so please before you humiliate those children be sure that you also did not um, bedwet for you know, uh, for a, a period of time. Other things that can cause anuresis is urinary tract infection, especially secondary anuresis, in which the child has, like I said, attained um, initial dryness. So when the child has an infection in the urinary tract, this can also um, cause anuresis. Diabetes is another cause of anuresis. Now, this is quite common in children more than we think. I know anytime we hear diabetes, we think about adults, grown-ups, older people, people with obesity and all that. But the truth is, diabetes in children is also a thing. And um, this should be considered when a child is having prolonged uh, night bedwetting or excess uh, urination during the night. So 
when someone has diabetes the idea is that person takes a lot of water feels very thirsty feels very hungry and of course if you take a lot of water it is expected that uh, you're going to uh, urinate a lot so this can also lead to uh, bedwetting in children constipation is also a cause of enuresis now the Direct the mechanism of constipation causing enuresis is not generally known, but it is assumed that uh, because of the clogging of uh, poo in the uh, gut, this pressurizes or places a pressure on the bladder, which will also reduce the um, capacity of the bladder. So, which means if your bladder was supposed to be taking one liter of liquid, your, part, uh, your bladder might not be able to take more than 200 ml, of course. And when this happens, the child is likely to um, release the um, urine. And um, this is a way that um, constipation can actually lead to enuresis. Other things that can cause enuresis are sleep disordered breathing that is when the child has what we call adenoids or adenotonsillar hypertrophy so the child is you know when you have a child that is always snoring and all it has some hormones that have been linked to um, enuresis an overreactive bladder this is more common in females and if you see if you notice that your child is um always squatting because they kind of squat to uh, relieve the urge to urinate so you should also take that into uh consideration that this might be the cause of uh, your child's enuresis. So these are some of the causes. There are quite a number of causes of enuresis which I won't be able to um, touch here. So this is why um, we need to actually probe a child that is um, bedwetting to be sure that it is not a structural abnormality. That is also a cause. Some children have some uh, structural abnormalities in their urinary tracts. They can have ectopic kidneys, ectopic urethras, and some other structural abnormalities that can lead to um, bedwetting. So we need to actually look for the cause of the bedwetting and not humiliate these children. So this is what um, this video is about. And shortly I'll be telling you the things that you should do and the things that you should not do when your child is bedwetting. So one thing I forgot to mention when I was mentioning the causes of enuresis, which is actually very important, is sexual abuse. I won't really touch so much on sexual abuse in this video. I hope subsequently to make some other videos where I get to talk about some of those things, conditions that I mentioned earlier, and I'll be able to go into details about those. So if you have a child that is um, constantly bedwetting, you should also uh, ask them questions. Uh, relating to sexual abuse. Having said all this, father, mother, caregiver, please do not panic. The main idea is not to make you panic, it's just to um, give you some of the um, causes and give you an idea about uh, what might be the cause of your child's bedwetting. In a lot of cases, the cause of bedwetting is unknown, it just happens. So I like to um, tell parents that they should treat their child or their uh, children as one or those that the cause of their bedwetting is unknown. So I will be talking about the things that you should do to help your child that is bedwetting and the things that you should not do. So let's start from the things that you should not do. Number one, do not embarrass your child. Back then, like I said earlier, parents would embarrass the child, they would humiliate the child. Sometimes they would even take you to school and report you to your teachers who would also join in the humiliation. I believe that um, this generation of parents are different. I believe that um, we have learned from some of the mistakes that our parents made. And I want to encourage you that please, when your child is bedwetting, that is not the child to embarrass, that's not the time, sorry, to embarrass such a child. It is a time for you to give that child tender, loving care. You need to be caring, you need to be attentive to the child, and you need to try to encourage the child because the whole idea of stopping bedwetting, it's like, it's like a partnership. It's a partnership between the doctor, the parents, and the child. So please, this is not a, a time for you to embarrass your child. It is not a time for you to put their mattress outside. It is not a time for you to sing songs. 
What's the name of that song again? I, I can't seem to remember. Thank God I can't remember so that I won't get to sing it for my children. So please, it is not time for you to sing songs. It is not time for you to insult or call abuses at them. It is time for you to show them that you are their parents and you care so much about them. So please do not humiliate them. Do not compare them to other children. I remember the story I told you, you know, they would always compare this guy to us then. We were younger and we we're still bedwetted. But for us as the younger ones, they made it look like it was okay for us to bedwet, but it wasn't okay for him to bedwet. So they thought by telling him that, oh, see, Ayobola, oh, Ayobola is still bedwetting. She's, and she's like five years younger than you, and you should not be bedwetting again. They felt that this would um, help the child. But in the long run, looking at him now, he, I'm sure he must have suffered a lot of uh, emotional um, distress, which the parents did not even realize. So please do not compare them to anybody. Every child is different, and they should not be compared to any other child. Next, do not punish them. Um, this is also in line with the other things I told you earlier. Punishing a child that bedwets does not change anything. If not, if anything, it will even inflict fear on the child. And once the child is afraid of you, this can even worsen the bedwetting. So please do not punish them. Do not beat them. Do not abuse them. Do not humiliate them. These are things that you should not do when your child is bedwetting. So let's talk about the things that you need to do when your child is bedwetting. Like I said, you have to be caring and understanding. Your children should be able to tell you, Mom, I did it again. Daddy, I peed again. And when they come to you with this, you should receive them with so much warmth and encourage them look for ways that will work with them like i said it is a partnership so ask them okay what do you think i can do to help you with this what do you think that we should do together that will help you um reduce the bedwetting okay so please do uh, be caring and understanding uh another thing that you would want to do is modify the behaviors of your child so this is very, in fact, this is like the most um, important um, aspect of the care of the bedwetting child. You need to talk to your child about bedwetting. You need to let them see why um, they are not supposed to be bedwetting past the age of six or seven. And you need to let them understand some of the causes of bedwetting. They need to put options out for them. You know, once you make them understand that uh, bedwetting is not something of pride, it's not something nice, every child would want to, you know, look for the, like every other person, they want to look for the brighter side of life. Okay, so when you make them see that uh, bedwetting is not something nice, they want to also um, help themselves. So you now give them the options of the things that you can do to um, improve um, their lifestyle. So... Uh, for behavioral modifications, one of the things that you want to do is reduce uh, the liquid that they take when it's close to bedtime. So, I remember that uh, one of my little cousins, uh, when he was bedwetting, came to our house and my mom helped actually to um, reduce the bedwetting. And what did they do? They talked, they discussed, they made an agreement, they signed a deal and the deal was not to take liquid water or anything past the time of seven whatever works for you and your child please do so please you can try to reduce uh, the amount of liquid they take before bedtime another thing is you want to help them maintain um, a normal bowel habit so this is in a bit to reduce constipation so you want to help them move their bowel regularly by giving them fiber letting them take a lot of water during the day like I said, reduce the liquid at night so that this can also eliminate constipation as a cause of um, any resins. After three months of trying all those uh, behavioral modifications, another thing is positive reinforcement. So which means that when your child goes a day or two or three without um, bedwetting, you should actually encourage them. You should um, praise them. Oh, you did a very good job. You're doing very well. And when they make a mistake, you shouldn't hold them. You should still tell them, okay, yes, we make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but, you know, pull yourself together. Tomorrow is another day to fight a soldier and all. And, you, you know, this child is encouraged to do more. 
So please, oh, you are like their best cheerleader when it comes to stopping bedwetting. You are the best cheerleader they have. So please cheerlead them very well so that they can, um, together with you, attain uh, um, dry, night dryness. So after three months of behavioral therapy and this uh, enuresis has not resolved, you need to try the alarm therapy. So this alarm therapy is basically setting times during the night where you wake up, you wake your child up and you take them to pee. So you can set the time for like two, every two hours or every three hours. The alarm wakes the child up and the child knows, okay, I am, it is time for me to take a leap. Okay, so please, this is also a very, uh, this is a very useful tool. Although it is said that you should wait until the child is after six years old before you use the alarm therapy because of course they expect that. Some children, even though by four, they should have attained um, nice dryness, but can extend beyond that. So please don't <laughs> don't set alarm for your five-year-old to um, to go pee at night. All right. So if all this fails, so you have tried behavioral therapy, you have tried alarm therapy, you have tried the encouragement and everything, it fails. Please do not be frustrated as the uh, father. It is time for you to go seek medical life. When you seek uh, medical support, there are also some medications that can be prescribed to uh, for your child's um, condition. Truth is, I'm not able to tell you uh, medical, uh, the, the drugs that can be prescribed here so that we can reduce the incidence of um, drug abuse. So that is why I'm not going to talk about those medications here. So please seek medical support if your child is not responding to behavioral therapy and alarm therapy. So, having said all this, I've said it before, do not panic. It is not something new. I mean, if, if you if you if you actually went to bed when you were a child, raise your hand. Yeah, some of us are here and we are doing well. But please know that the way you handle a child that is bedwetting goes a long way in determining the mental and the psychosocial well-being of your child. So please do not even allow anybody. You know there are some people that will come and poke their nose into your business. They come from nowhere. You have been managing your child very well. And I remember the story, I think it was recently that it was circulating online about a child that was taken to a boarding house. And because the child was uh, bedwetting, they started treating him badly. The details of which I'm not in the right position to do. So please protect your bedwetting child. Protect them with everything you have. It is nobody's business that your child is bedwetting. It is not your problem. It is your problem and try as much as possible to solve it with your child and your medical practitioner. So that will be it today on a new races. Thank you so much for um, joining us. I believe you must have learned a thing or two. Please feel free to drop your comments below. Let us know your experience. If you have questions and comments, drop them in the comment section below. And I will be here to respond. I'm always, always happy to respond and uh, shine light on those um, in those dark areas. Okay, so I'll be here to respond. If you have any queries, if you have any topic that's been bothering you, you want me to talk about, drop them below. And we'll be here to respond. Thank you.